So this is a, a video which goes over the homework. I did give homework, and this is what the homework is. Starting on page 47. So this is section, this is section 1.8. So this is the homework review. And this is section uh, 1.8. And this is page 47. And I give you two, uh, two functions or two relations and ask you to, the question says, use the vertical line test. So this is question three, problem B. And this is what it looks like. It's a graph. And it looks like that. And you have to use the vertical line test to determine if that's a function or not. And if you use the vertical line test, you'll see that the graph is touched by the straight line in only one point. So no matter where you draw this line, the line is only touching the graph in one, in one place. And what that tells you is that for every value of x, there's one and only one value for y. That's what's going on there, as opposed to the opposite situation, which is problem F I also gave, which looks like this. This is a little hard to draw. I've, I've graphed this. This is a weird looking function that I've actually graphed, I remember once, from scratch. It was like weird. There are actually math, we're, we're going to be doing some of them in section two, uh, starting next week when we do section, uh, chapter two, rather. And this is definitely not a function. And the reason is, is that if you do the vertical line test, that vertical line touches the curve in one, two, three, four, five, six places. So it is definitely not a function because it's touching the, you know, the graph in more than one point. And this is a function. All right, that's not on the test though. So let's breeze through that. And we get to problem five on page 48. This sort of is on the test, problem five. And I give you problem 5b, and I give you the function g of x equals negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. And you go to the first question, which indicates to find g of x, a g of 0. So what this means is that wherever you see an x, you're going to substitute a 0. Negative 3 times 0. 2 times 0. You're just evaluating the function, the given function, using 0 as the value of x. This is going to wipe out the entire uh, term, so you don't have to worry about that. This is going to wipe out the entire term, and the answer is negative 4. g of 0 is equal to negative 4. The reason why it wipes it out is that anything multiplied by 0 is zero. Okay, so that's the first problem in that section. And this is the second problem. All we're doing is evaluating the function. And here we're using negative one as the value of x. Because you want to work that out very carefully because there are negatives, there are exponents going on here, a lot, a lot of things going on. Negative one to the second is one positive one. And positive two times negative one is negative two, negative four equals negative three minus two minus four. And then this comes out to negative nine, I believe. So five and four is nine. So g of negative 1 equals negative 9. That's how you're supposed to write it, just like that. And there is a question on the exam, which 
we'll want you to do something like that. Here's question part three of that same question wants you to find g of x plus two. Okay, this is uh, a problem that we're going to talk about more when we do the uh, difference quotient. But again, you're going to substitute negative three times x plus two squared plus two. This is the hardest part of the problem, in my opinion, x plus two squared, which you just have to multiply x plus two times x plus two, and you get x squared plus four x plus four. Plus, and just keep writing this. Does anybody want me right now to do this problem? I didn't actually do the problem because I, I sort of did it mentally. But if you would like me to write it down, I'd be happy to. So if anybody wants to know how I got from here to here, you have to indicate, Professor, please do the problem. Professor, can you do the problem, please? Okay, that's all you have to do in this class is say, do it again. So here it is. And this isn't a do it again. This is just simply a do it. But it's x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And you do x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Right? And then you go here. 2x, and you line up the two x's because you're going to be adding them, plus 4. And then this becomes x squared plus 4x plus 4. So I took this and put it over there. See? But I could do it, you know, mentally. And that's nothing special. I mean, really, I mean, it's not. that's not because... I've studied math for 54, more than 54 years, really. This is simply because, you know, I know that if you multiply these two together, 2x and 2x is 4x, and 2 times 2 is 4. But if you need to write it like this, that's fine. Wonderful. As long as you get the, you know, it right, going from here to here, that's fine. Don't, don't think you're doing something horrible. Negative 3x squared, negative 12x, negative 12, plus 2x, plus 4, minus 4. And obviously, this humongous thing over here needs to be simplified. Now, I'll tell you a very fast way of simplifying this. Drop out the 4s, because a positive 4 and a negative 4 will give you 0. So you can get rid of that immediately equals negative 3x squared. Are there other x? Yeah, negative 12x and positive 2x is negative 10x and negative 12. So g of x plus 2 is equal to this expression. What am I doing now? I'm checking my, I'm checking my work. Do I trust myself? No. Don't be ridiculous. I'm oh, I've always made mistakes. My whole life I've made math, math mistakes. I mean, I know what I'm doing, but I still make mistakes. Ah, looks right. Okay. That's the problem. So they give you kind of a real easy one, which is, you know, G to G g of zero, and then g of negative one, and then they give you a little more complicated one. That's that's the philosophy of for the person who created this problem. Okay, next problem, but page 51. This is on the test. So page 51, problem F. You are given a function. And you are asked to find the domain of the function. Okay, we did this Monday, the concept of a domain. Domain 
simply refers to which values of x can we use? Which values of x can we use? That will still make this a function. This is a function, but in order to make it a function, we have to uh, do some re restricting here. So you look at this and you say the only thing that will make this not a function is whatever will make inside the radical a negative number. You can't take the square root of a negative number. Therefore, when x minus 3 is, negative, that is a negative number, so that means that x minus 3 is less than or equal to zero. Well, not equal to zero, because if you put, oh, uh, wait a minute. Well, it could be equal to zero, because the square root of zero you'll be able to find. But when this is great, so less than zero, it's going to be. So this is positive 3, positive 3. When x is less than 3, that's the problem. So if we created a number line, the domain will be everything that's not less than 3. So in other words, because x could equal 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. So x could equal 3, and then it, it, it just can't be less than 3. Okay, that's what this is saying. X, you know, is is when X is less than three, this is not part of the domain. So this is what it looks like. So when we do this, X minus three is less than zero, it's everything else. So if X is less than three, we can't use X less than three. We can only use things that are greater than or equal to three. And using... Uh, interval notation, this is what it'll be. This is the answer to the question right there. Okay, so once again, in this type of a, there's only two types of functions where there are problems with the domain. And that occurs when you're taking the square root of a number. And remember that the, that the, the inside of a square root cannot be less than zero. So you figure out what happens when it is less than zero. It can't be x less than three. It has to be everything either equal to three or greater than three. And there's the answer. Through from three all the way going out to infinity. The other situation, which is a problem, is problem J, which states, that f of x is equal to one, one over one minus x. Now the problem is that you can't have a fraction that has a zero in the denominator. So when one minus x is equal to zero, that's the problem. So let's see what x has to be for this to not work. So, you know, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out, uh, well, let, let, let's see when it is equal to zero, because I'm just curious as to what the actual value is. So let's see. So let's bring over the x. And, okay, well, when x is equal to 1, duh, because 1 minus 1 is equal to zero. So that's a problem. So in other words, on the number line, it's any other number except one. It's an open circle at one. Otherwise, it could be less than one, going all the way out to negative infinity. It could be greater than one, going out to positive infinity. So here it is on here it is in interval notation. Here it is in interval notation. Negative infinity to one, then it skips over one because it can't equal one, and then from one to infinity. And this is the answer 
to the question in interval notation. It doesn't say it in the uh, in the uh, workbook, but uh, on the test, it has to be interval notation. And that's, I believe that's it for section 1.8. And we're now in section 1.9. And the question I give you is very, very similar in the workbook as to the question that I will give you on the actual exam. It's on page 56. So, you know, put a star next to it because this question will be on the test. Problem B, problem 2B. Okay, so G of X is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1 minus 4. And what they're asking for is the parent function. There are three parts to the question. The first part says, what is the parent function? So you say, OK, the parent function, and this is the way the test question will look, will be f of x equals the absolute value of x. The most basic form of the absolute value function looks like this. So this is the answer to the question. There it is. Does it say sketch? Name the parent function. No, it doesn't say sketch the parent function. But if I were doing this problem, I would do, I would sketch it anyway, just to get an idea as to what it looks like. That's always a good idea because this will help you to do this problem, in my opinion. All right. Now, section two says describe the sequence of transformation from f of x to g of x. In other words, what they want you to do is say, well, we're moving the vertex from zero, zero to the new vertex, which is negative one, negative four. It's always the opposite of whatever is there. If this says positive one, it's negative one. And the negative four is always the same. All right, so just remember, when this is a positive one, this is a negative one, and that's a negative four. So to describe what you're doing, well, you're moving the vertex to a different uh, point. Instead of zero, zero, that's what, it's, this is, a, I don't like this question. It's not on the test. I don't ask you to describe the sequence. I go right to the third part, which asks you for a sketch. So here you go. Is there a negative? Nope. All right, this is it. So it's negative one, negative four. This is where it is. It's still going to begin. And it goes up here and up there. Now, somebody in your, in your future may say to you, well, where does it intersect the x-axis and the y-axis? You know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you that. All I want to know is what it looks like. Now, let me just remind you of one very important thing going over here, g of x. If g of x had been negative x plus 1 minus 4, right? So I instead of a positive in front, I put a negative in front. What that negative does, everything remains the same. It's the vertex will still be at negative one, negative four, but instead of the graph going up, holding water, remember the concept of holding water and emptying water, it'll go down like this. Let me get everything out of the way so you get a good view of this. It'll look like that. Okay, so that negative in front of the actual function causes 
this parent function to go upside down. So instead of looking like this, it'll look like this. Okay, so that's important. Okay, and now we that's the only question I gave you from uh, chapter section 1.9. And now we go on to section 1.10. At, at the top, section 1.10, problem on page 66, problem 7D. And this is what the question will actually look like on the exam. It will give you a, an, equa a, a, an equation in two variables. And this is the equation. Okay, there it is, and ask you to solve this. And the way, you know, there's two ways of solving it. We can either get rid of the X's, as was done on Monday, or you could get rid of the Y's. I like to get rid of the, the um, variable that has, one has a positive, one has a negative already, rather than start to multiply. Because here, you know, it would be multiplying the top equation by two in the bottom equation, by negative four, or the opposite. This by negative two, that by positive four. But uh, So I'm going to do five on top and three on the bottom. See, and then I don't have to worry about negatives because one is already positive and one is already negative. So I took this five, put it up here, take that three, put it down there, that's how I got the five and the three. This three goes there, this five goes there, and then 20x plus 15y equals 75, and 6x minus 15y equals three. This drops out, this becomes 26x equals 78. Oh, oh, thank thank goodness, right? Thank goodness you can divide 26 into 78. And that's three. So X is equal to three. Uh, and if you if you doubt me, you could multiply and you got 78. So that's good news. And now the second part of the problem will be finding out what y is equal. And to do that, you're going to take the x and substitute it back into the equation. 12 plus 3y equals 15 minus 12 minus 12. 3y equals 3. And y is equal to 1. And the answer to this question is x equals three, y equals one. You can either write it like that, or you could write it as an ordered pair. And there really is a third part of the problem, but that's optional. I, I don't, you know, and that's the check. And the check simply involves taking this value three, one, and substituting it into the second equation. And that would be, you know, what the check is. In other words, two times three is six minus five times one is five. Does that equal one? That's your check, big deal, you know? So that's not a bad, that's not bad at all. 